expert, you know, when you get told that you're the next up and coming this and that and you're compared to all these great players when you're just like a little that's done nothing yet, you think ahead. And I do remember having said like in the media that like I wanted to be the best in the world. And I think that just made me feel like I couldn't do anything outside of the field that was fun because then I'm not like staying on that path of becoming the greatest. And now Fowler, what a strike from Mary Fowler, straight into the top corner for her first international goal. Yeah, I mean, for me, getting selected was a massive honour. You know, after the last World Cup, I had gone and I, I didn't have any minutes and it was an amazing experience just being there, being with all the girls, seeing how big it all was. But it gave me so much motivation to want to be there for the next one and to play a bigger role in this team. Being able to get the news that I had done that was, was pretty big for me just like as a personal thing. Also the added fact that it was at home, going to be in front of you know the whole nation, um, having family and friends there, like it's just... It's stuff that you don't dream of when you start out your career. It's just, you just wouldn't think that that would be possible because there's so much that has to happen that's out of your control. She's off just for the moment and Van Egmont will swing the cross in and Fowler in the back of the net and it's two for Australia and Mary Fowler is on the score sheet. I mean, a lot has happened in the last four years. I was like actually just like writing things out in my journal the other day of like what I've done so far in my career and so much stuff has happened since then and I'm like, I feel like I've been playing football for so long. The things I'm most proud of is how I've changed as a person. Um, and a lot of that has happened through football experiences. I think probably at the last World Cup, I was, I was young and I was very confident. Probably, you know, it's a very thin line between confidence and arrogance. I was a striker back then all the time, scoring goals. And I remember like when I went to France, there was a couple of girls in the team that were like around my age. And they were like, oh, like, Let's make a list of places we want to go to, restaurants we want to go see. And I told them, I was like, oh yeah, cool. Like I can come out two times a month. And, and they didn't tell me until later, but they were like, we, we looked at each other and we said to each other, there's something wrong with that girl. Like she's crazy. But I just felt like I, I couldn't, like I felt like football needed to be everything. Whereas now I'm like, it's much more of like a whole thing. Like football ends one day and you have this life that's still to be lived and like, when I look back, I, I don't want to just see that like I've not made any nice memories with my teammates or I've, I don't have any friends or anything. It's been a nice journey in that sense. The growth I've had off the field is probably very much related to how I've changed on the field as well. Like I feel a lot more comfortable out there just because I'm more comfortable with myself. I had it in my mind that I needed to be the best in the world. Like it just means that every single one of your teammates you're competing with them. Like instead of you being like, I could pass you the ball here and it would be a 100% goal. It's like, no, nah, I'm gonna shoot from here because I need the stat. Whereas now it's like so much nicer to just be like, I just want to win with the team. Like it's such a, it's a team sport, you know? And even if I don't get a goal, like I'm so happy for my teammate to score. Like they're on their journey that was meant for them. You can't like force things. For me, it's just felt like I've taken the next natural step in my career each time. So I don't feel like it's been rushed or anything like that. <laughs> Going to the Olympics, because that's like the only dream I had as a kid. And it wasn't even like, I want to go to the Olympics for football. It was just, I want to go to the Olympics, like whether it was for running or something else. I was playing netball as well, but they don't have that in the Olympics. I didn't know at the time. I, before I got picked for the Olympics, I said to myself, I'm not going to finish football until I make it to an Olympics. But then I got picked uh, in that squad and I was like, oh, what do I do with myself now? That was my one like sporting dream that I had, like be being an Olympian. And then we went there and like we had a decent tournament together and I got a goal and I was like, this is mad. Like just thinking about the little kid that had that dream, like, I get to be able to like say like I've ticked that off like I did that so that's that's definitely like the most you know proud achievement that I've done so far. I've become my like biggest supporter and the way I do that is through making sure that I celebrate my small wins even like not football stuff but off the field stuff wearing my hair out for the first time like I was so self-conscious about doing that 
and in France I did it and I was like, wow, that's a small win. Like I didn't want to do that for so long, did it. I definitely struggled a bit with like the image of who Mary Fowler is and then me with myself, like who do I think I am? What do people expect me to be? And do I have to be that? Yeah, I mean, I don't really tune into that anymore and it's more about like, what do I want? And I think I ride a lot and that helps me like understand like my feelings, what I want. Like I write a lot about what I would like for the future. If I'm not really thinking good about myself, then I will just write about the kind of woman I would like Mary to be. And then in certain situations be like, what would that Mary do in this situation? It's constant like growth, constant journey in that sense.